Hi, I'm James Jessup, the Sales and Marketing Director from PCS Thailand. Welcome to our Facility Management Thought Leadership Series, where we'll be talking to the movers and shakers of the facility management industry, with a focus on data, technology and the workplace experience. Today, we're going to take a deep dive into workplace experience. And when we think about workplace experience in the context of facility management, this has really taken off about five years ago. Prior to that, facilities management was more about making sure that the facilities worked and that they could operate as intended. But then that has evolved into making sure that the facilities provide a better workplace for employees to work more efficiently and more productively. So this has evolved over time and more recently the workplace ex experience has evolved into bringing people together and creating stronger communities. Of course, uh, this has changed over the last 12 months due to the pandemic. Historically, when we talk about the workplace experience, the focus has really been on the office environment as opposed to the home environment. With the pandemic, workers are now working from home rather than the office. So there's been a whole change in the dynamics of workplace experience, particularly in the last 12 months. So I'm very pleased to be able to introduce an absolute expert in the workplace experience field. Kyle De Bruin, welcome to the Thought Leadership Facility Management Series. Uh, perhaps you could give us a bit of a, an overview of the workplace experience, what Le Leesman does and how it all works. Yeah, thanks very much, James. Um, thank you for having me here today. Um, so you mentioned uh, employee experience being the focal point for the last five years. We've at Leesman have been measuring employee experience for the past 10 years, since 2010, almost 11 years. Um, the company was really created with a, a mission to provide the workplace uh, industry with an independence assessment tool mm -hmm. uh, to, to measure employee workplace experience. Um, so over the past, uh, well, since 2010, we've been we've been measuring uh, various or well, multiple workplaces all around the world, um, and we've accumulated about 820,000 individual responses to to office working environments, and more um, more recently, 160,000 responses to home working environments. So we're really focusing on on understanding what make these makes these environments uh, effective, productive, and really support employees uh, to be able to do their work. Um, what this data then also allows us to do is provide sort of an, an unparalleled benchmarking capabilities for our clients. So all of our data that we that we gather for our clients or all of our clients' data is is then um, uh, benchmarked on, on great detail from a from a global average point of view, but also a high performance point of view. And and lastly, what we do with the data as well is we we research it um, in, in in many different ways. We have a dedicated team that looks at the data and understands really what are the main contributors to overall uh, employee experience and what's driving good employee experience. Yeah, so that, that's a, it's an incredible amount of data to work from, you know, over 800,000 bits of information around uh, workplace experience in the office, nearly 200,000 data points in terms of the, um, the home experience. So when you look at the last 12 or so months, you know, there's been that shift in dynamics where more and more people are working from home. So what does the, the data tell us about what's been happening in the last 12 or so months? Sure. So as I mentioned, um, when, when the pandemic hits beginning of last year, we, we actually created a brand new tool which measures home working experience, very similar to our office tool, but uh, slightly adapted for, for that environment. Um, and, and, and having that accumulated that data, we've, we've, we've you know, with the, I guess the, the, the intense focus of, of everyone around the world on the situation, we've been, we've been studying that data really um, proactively over, over the past sort of six to eight months. So what we're seeing effectively and this is no surprise really is that the average home working um, environment supports the employee very well right mm -hmm. um, we're seeing around a 10 point increase on our on our um, leesman index scores between our office in the average office environment versus the average home environment so there's a remarkable increase um, and i think some of the the aspects were probably initially that surprised us was that, that were more successful is around the technology aspects, digital infrastructure, etc. These were some of the reasons probably holding back workforces from being working more remote initially or, or pre COVID, let's say. Right. So initially we were expecting those those types of areas, digital security and, and privacy concerns to be quite problematic, but actually those were very, very smooth and and the transition was was very uh, was w worked out pretty well, I guess, for most organizations. Um, the areas that are, I'd say, struggling in the data that we see uh, or employees are struggling with, you know, that the data is telling us would be areas around, around well-being, right? Mm -hmm. So 
um, employee well-being. Let's, let's talk about work-life balance, um, connection to your colleagues, connection to your organization. So those sort of more um, human-centric uh, aspects, let's say, are, are, are the areas of concern. Now, I say that the overall, uh, the overall uh, homework experience is, is positive, um, but what we do see in almost every organization that we measure, let's say about the bottom quarter, 20 to 25% of staff are actually having a, a like a, um, a, a suboptimal performance at home, really struggling at home, you could say, right? So even though we, we can make some sweeping sort of generalizations around homeworking being successful, there is in almost all cases, a, a portion of each organization who are really struggling from home. Now, the contributing factors to that, we know the main driver based on our research recently um, that, that drives experience at home is the homework setting, right? Mm -hmm. So we have three, three main choices in our data, in our data, which is, uh, working from a, a dedicated desk in a dedicated room, so effectively your own private office at home. Uh, this is the most preferable environment. And then we have on the other extreme, um, a shared uh, location. So let's say a dining room table or a sofa or somewhere that's that's less, that's not dedicated uh, to, to, to your daily work, right? And these are the things that we're really seeing driving um, performance at home. Okay, so that's really interesting. So um, I, I know that a number of our viewers are really keen to understand what they can do to make their workplace experience at home better. You've mentioned that you know part of this is around having a dedicated workspace is absolutely a big plus. Are there any other tips or tricks or things that they should do or things that they should have that could further improve uh, the workplace experience at home? Yes, yeah, so I guess uh, employers have a limited control really of, of what they can do you know, in home environments versus the office, right? Of course, uh, providing an office is, is in full control of those employees. So um, that is, you know, the um, the work setting I just mentioned before, you know, is is not is not so simple to solve, right? Mm -hmm. We see a lot of our clients supporting them, their employees via, you know, various schemes to support ergonomic factors. So you know, better chairs, better desks, etc. But it gets very tricky when you have employees in a in a particular home environment that. Mm -hmm that isn't conducive to maybe moving in a big office chair necessarily, right? They yeah. may not have been for that. So it is, it is a challenge. I think you could flip that question around and say, what can employers do with their offices uh, rather than the homes to actually provide them? Okay, obviously right now under, under certain lockdown restrictions, mm. you know, that's not gonna, be, uh, not gonna be the case or possible. But of course, if, you, if we look to the future a bit more, there's certainly gonna be, um, uh, the, the office is gonna play a bigger part than what people can actually have in their homes because there is always gonna be limitations to that. Yeah, sure. And, and when you look at the, the types of roles or uh, skills that um, staff can have, is there a particular skill set or role that is more suitable uh, to working from home as opposed to working in the office? And of course, the converse applies to that. Yeah, sure. We, um, we get asked this question a lot and I would, I'd say from a Leesman perspective, we'd say approach with caution, right? Um, what we've done recently is study uh, in, in great detail the, um, uh, the responses that we get around collaborative activities versus individual um, activities. So, it, you know, the type of profiling, as it were, of, of roles that are more conducive to more collaboration or need more individual focus work. And surprisingly, even within these extremes of, pe of staff that are very collaborative or very individual, um, we're still seeing a, a great need for, for both of those aspects in, in almost everyone's day-to-day -day work, right? So the data is not as compelling as you might think where you could just assign a particular role uh, to, um, you know, to the office or the home. So there's, there's always got to be a balance that's, that's sort of struck there. And the majority of staff actually don't sit in these extremes. Majority of employees around the world mm. have a mixed profile between um, individual and collaborative. So if we think about the, you know, you know, sort of assigning them to one or other location, that's really going to be um, potentially problematic for, for some of those. Now we did study, um, we did study the, through various organizations or, or bigger data sets, different types of, um, different types of roles or departments, let's say within those data, right? And what you do see in a particular organization will be one, one department will outperform another department, right? Yeah. Sales versus marketing versus IT versus HR, right? They're all going to have it generally, you know, um, closer profiles to each other within the same within the same department but when you look across different organizations then it gets really interesting because you would expect HR to be in a particular place but when you look at multiple organizations that starts moving around very quickly so I think the message is is that you can't make a sweeping statement about a particular role or particular department and say you know they should be in a particular place to do to do their work it's really about assessing each organization each department or each 
you know, really get that get that detail out of each organization to be able to understand and make those decisions um, in the smartest way. Okay. So then if we pivot back to the office environment, uh, when you look at the data over the last, you know, five, ten years, the nearly one million surveys that have been completed, uh, what are the top two or three items in the office environment which really, you know, provides a better workplace experience in the office? I know, for example, a few years ago, you know, access to hot drinks and uh, cold drinks was a really key driver. Is that still the case or are there other things that are now taking over? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that, that's an interesting one. We, um, we, we did a study into our data about three years ago and looked at um, what aspects of, of, of day to day, you know, features and activities that, that staff are doing that really drives performance and tea and coffee services really came out as what we call it one of the super drivers. Mm. So we have a, um, we, we, we have certain aspects which we call super drivers, which are the, 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 the parts of, of the day to day experience, which are having the most in, impact on your overall employee experience. I think when we, when we look at high performance, we, we have a dedicated uh, sort of data set, or I say a select data set of, of le uh, buildings which have scored a certain um, threshold above 70 LMI in our scoring system, and we call these Leesman class buildings. And we actually study these each year um, in, in some detail. And the, the main drivers or the main aspects I say that, that those successful organizations are, are implementing is mainly around variety in workspace, right? So, um, you know, it's not a one size fits all cookie cutter approach, really giving employees um, the opportunity to move around uh, the building and and adapt themselves to different environments depending on what type of work they're doing and we think this is going to be even more key going forward right if you think about the if the, the aspect of acoustic privacy so home environments are supporting conversations private conversations the ability to talk with any of your colleagues pretty much instantaneously in a private setting is really a positive aspect of home working and if we think about that in the office you know, if we if we consider a massive open plan sort of disaster area, I'd say of of multiple employees sitting in a, in an open plan space and not having somewhere else to go and have those conversations, that's really going to be um, a challenge, I think, because you you're going to have a, a blend probably of employees that are in the office and at home, mm. and there's going to be this new need or expectation or requirement to have um, a lot more, you know. Zoom or, or, or conference calls, let's say, um, with those employees. So I think that that variety is going to become even more important when we think about, you know, acoustic privacy, as I mentioned. Okay. So if an organization wants to understand more about what their workplace experience is for their staff, be it in the office and or at home, how does it work? How can Leesman help support, get a better understanding of where you're at in terms of your organization, in terms of workplace experience? Yeah, sure. So we, Around those two topics, we, we have two main surveys, which we call the Leesman Office Survey and the Leesman Homeworking Survey. So um, we, we would um, engage with, with an organization, understand exactly what their objectives are, what they're trying to understand in, in, in great detail, and then tailor, you know, or provide those survey tools and then tailor some additional questions potentially to make sure those objectives are met. Um, and then we, we you know, our, our mission really is to is to help our clients make their workplaces better. So we pre present and, and provide that data back to organizations and then they can use that in, in, in many, many ways to to drive their decisions from a, you know, an, um, an evidence based sort of platform. Right? So yeah. um, it allows various different roles within these large organizations and small organizations to be able to communicate effectively between um, between the departments. You know, we're seeing a real blend of FM corporate real estate, HR, and even technology partners really coming into the same the same boardroom as it were right now, or the same Zoom call to have these conversations and figure out what's best for the employee, right? So it used to be very much, um, you know, kind of siloed between these, 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 um, these different parts of an organization all trying to meet their objectives. But the conversation now as it, as it sort of matured and, and even accelerated during COVID, is all around the employee, right? Mm. Looking after the employee, making sure they are having the best possible experience. And, you know, that's not just, you know, to make them feel happy or, or satisfied in their role. It's also to, to get, you know, to get the most out of that employee mm. so that there's a, a mutual benefit and, and really enabling that employee to do their work in the most effective way. So, Carl, how does it work in terms of um, if, if an organization wants to understand more about their workplace experience? Uh, you mentioned before there's a there's a survey. Um, typically, how many questions are there? How long does it typically take to answer? And what percentage of staff ideally complete this survey? Yeah, sure. Um, 
this, the survey typically takes between 10 and 15 minutes, depending on, on how many questions are, are added on as well. But in general, the, the, the office survey is 11 minutes in duration. So we want to keep that as short as possible, keep the, um, you know, the, the participation rate and the completion rate as high as possible for our, for our, for our clients. And we also promote uh, for our clients to, to survey as many people within a, a particular workplace as, as possible, preferably all of them. Um, because when we're providing an, an LMI score back for a particular environment, mm. uh, we want that data to be as representative as possible. So we would more promote as, as exactly as many as many um, as, as can take it uh, would would give an overall better better result as far as uh, data representation. Yes. Yeah, and and when the organisations get these results for their workplace experience, they'll get an LMI score. You know, hopefully it's high or you know, it will be what it will be. But typically, what are you seeing organisations doing next? So are they saying, well, I need to redesign the physical space of, of my workplace experience? Uh, or is it about uh, how they redesign the, the services design? So organisations like PCS that provide facility services, maybe they can help support improving the workplace experience? Or is it just small little things that they might change, you know, hot drinks and all that sort of stuff? I, I think it's a... It, it, it could be all of those things and some of those things definitely. Mm. Um, so our data is, you know, defining what employees do in the workplace. We we show um, activity complexity profiles. You can really understand the the and, and as well as mo um, mobility profiles. So you can understand what people do and how they move around the building, mm. and that can certainly um, feel conversations or strategies around what the environment needs to facilitate with regards to um, those employees doing those roles. Um, then there's detail on physical and service features. So we have 50 of those and that really breaks down all of the, vi the virtual and physical environment, both from a, you know, a an FM services point of view, but also the, the, the actual infrastructure that, that's, that's around those employees. So our clients use the data in many, many different ways. It could be in a pre and post occupancy approach. So really from creating the initial workplace strategy and design right through to completion of the project and actually assessing how how successful that environment is and then other clients will use our survey as you know on an incremental basis let's say annually for example where they're actually measuring an entire portfolio and keeping tabs on on really certain aspects within within those environments and making sure that they're continually performing where they need to be or making incremental improvements as they go to to employ in, increase the experience for the employees okay now, when you look at Asia, I know uh, everyone thinks that they're a little bit different. Um, but you know, one of the, the uh, in, what I'm curious about is working from home in Asia could be considered a little bit different to perhaps other parts of the world. And, and the reason why I say that is that typically the home environment is a lot smaller than some parts of the world. Uh, and also there's often a lot more people living in, in that uh, home environment. So the attraction of working from home may not be as strong as it could be in other parts. Of, of the globe, any uh, have you got any data to support if that's the case or or not? Can you bust that myth? Yeah, sure. It's a question we get a lot of, and we we got um, we got that question a lot, especially in the early days of home working, because um, you know Asia was ahead of the curve with regards to getting ahead or or, or getting ahead of the um, the virus, let's say, with regards to lockdowns, etc. Um, so fortunately. I mentioned we had 160,000 responses to home working. About 30% of that is actually coming from what we, we could call Asia. Okay. And that's India, China, um, a mixture of Southeast Asia, which includes Thailand, Singapore, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Malaysia, etc. We also have in that group maybe some Japanese and South Korean data as well. So there's a definitely a, a representation of that of that region in the data. Now I guess to bust the myth, I would say the average HLMI score is 73.6 for that group. Um, and the overall global average is just above 74. So as an average from an HLMI point of view, that's a ho home Leesman index score. Yeah. Uh, that Asian that Asian data set is just slightly below the rest of the world, right? Um, so, you know, it, it's not drastically worse off, that's for sure. Now, um, I think if we look a little bit deeper, which which I mentioned homework setting earlier, because that's the, the point you touched on there. Mm. Um, you know, what do the environments, uh, what environments are available to employees within the region to be able to do their work, right? If that's the number one driver. Um, interestingly, this is where we do see a bit of a shift, right? And, and you touched on it just now. Mm. So we see an 8% um, increase on rest of the world versus Asia on the most ideal a setting, which is a, a, um, a separated, a separate room, right? A separated office, which in your house. So the data certainly shows then that um, 
there's probably more of that going on where there's where there's an, an, a shared environment where multiple people may be working from. In fact, in that middle the middle setting, which is actually a dedicated desk in a shared environment, that Asian group is 10% ahead of rest of the world. So there's um, a lot more um, uh, you know a lot more employees out there within the Asian demographic, let's say, who are working in a shared uh, room. But they do have a dedicated desk. So okay. um, uh, you know, compared to compared to the rest of the data, it's a, it's a bit slightly ahead. So so it, there's a there's a number of factors. Obviously, it's very hard to just look at one stat and say this is the answer. Um, you know, even those countries I mentioned just now are going to have a real mixture of different types of environments, um, and that's where we keep. You know, we, 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 when we get asked these questions, it really comes down to assessing each individual organization, each demographic group and understanding that in great detail, because you, you can't look at stats across a region, across even a country and say this is the case, um, you know, for a particular organization or group. If we think about, you know, city versus, um, you know, more rural areas, I mean, North America, generally, we see higher home working scores. But if you look at, you know, New York versus the Midwest, you're going to have a completely different um, setting there. So, um, yeah, I hope that answers the question. I think um, th there's a lot of data that that we could get into, yep. um, but but on a, as an average, you know, it's um, it's uh, it's it's slightly below. Yeah, and look, I mean, it's interesting that the, the data does not lie. So uh, we'll, we'll trust you on that one. Um, and now I'd like, like you to think about the your crystal ball. So, if you look into the future, what what does the workplace experience look like? You know, is there going to be a mass exodus back from home into the office uh, or is there going to be a rebellion where uh, staff continue to say I want to work from home or is there going to be a bit of a hybrid model where there's a mix of working from home, working at the office, you know, during a normal working week? Yeah, very topical question. And um, I mean, we as Leesman don't, uh, don't, don't try and crystal, crystal ball gaze too much. That's yeah. not really what we do. We, we're led by the data and yeah. we, we like to study what data we have and, and, and base our decisions and, and conversations on that. But that's not to say, I mean, we're, we're talking to clients every day about this question. Everyone's, everyone's trying to look down the road and figure out what, what that looks like. I think there's, there's some certain sort of facts that, that are just, you know, this is no, um, this is no uh, sort of secret source from Leesman. Everyone, uh, you know, almost everyone in the industry is talking about some of these facts and that's the, the, the perception from employees generally around the world is that they're going to be wanting to work from home and the office uh, in, in a hybrid way. Mm -hmm. And the consensus generally seems to be around two to three days um, in, in, in home or office, right? So let's say a roughly half the week in yeah. each of these environments. Country to country, we do see slightly different sort of, um, um, you know, predictions or discussions going on. I know I was talking to a client of mine in China a few weeks back and, and a lot of those um, organizations have gone almost back to normal in, in some cases uh, in Shanghai was the case that I saw. Um, but uh, I think, you know, on average, let's say we're going to see uh, certainly a, utilize, a utilization of, of home office and, and third space like co-working spaces, etc. Um, there, there's a lot of conversation around how we can how we can re re reduce the commuting time for for everyone you know that's a that's a positive for for employees and employers right uh, not having people spending too much time commuting and, the environment, um, and that's going to and the environment yeah exactly there's 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 benefits on on both sides for that you know and and for the yeah for 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 the environment for sure um work life balance can be improved and, and and all of those types of things um i think what you know, if we if we have to think about the future, I think what's what's clear and what we see from our data is that the office is going to have to work harder than it previously did, right? Mm -hmm. um, to attract staff back to the office and also to attract new talent, right? We need to think about the next generations coming through. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone sitting at home and 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 not you know our youngsters that we're working with are, are not having the ability to to get that knowledge transfer that they would normally get in the office, mm -hmm. right? So. You know, organizations we feel that are going to be successful in the future are going to be focused on providing a fantastic office experience. Yep. Now, that could be um, slightly different to what they were offering before, which we think about collaboration mm -hmm. uh, uh, activities or more collaborative activities that would be provided. But it's it's in competition now with the home, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and I, I mentioned all those those really positive aspects of home working, which are not going away, which employee employees are going to have, you know, the the, the option to choose in, in, in a lot of cases. So the office is going to have to work harder to to get um, to get those staff back. So Kyle, if an organization wants to undertake a workplace experience assessment, how can they get in contact with Leesman? Sure, uh, very easy. Head to our website, it's leesmanindex.com. Uh, you can contact us through one of the uh, contact buttons there. And 
on the website's plenty cool information our research is all available it's free to download as well should you be interested you can email me directly as well my email is kyle.debrain at leesmanindex.com and feel free to get in touch we uh, we love to we love to talk about workplace experience we're data geeks so if you've got a challenge and you want to just just have a chat to us about it please feel free to get in touch with us great thank you and of course you can get in contact with uh, pcs and we can help connect you uh, to leesman and this is the uh, address here so Carl, thank you once again for a, a fantastic in-depth insight into the workplace experience. Uh, really, really interesting about the, the data points that you've got and how that links to the ever-changing uh, workplace experience in terms of the office and at home. So that brings us to an end of the facility management thought leadership session for today. Thank you for watching and I hope that you can join us again for our next thought leadership series shortly. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>